Hello friends, welcome to another video from my series Quick Faults On, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. 50 years and several weeks ago NBC aired the next episode of the classic Star Trek show, it was called Requiem for Methuselah, I hope I pronounced it correctly, and these are my honest opinions about it. And I really apologize for the current state of my voice. The crew of the Enterprise is suffering from Rigelian fever, which is a deadly virus to which there is just one known cure, Rytalin. Well, thankfully they find a planet which is rich on Rytalin. What a coincidence. The standard trio, consisting of Kirk, Spock and McCoy, is surprised by a hovering robot thingy, which moves like it's hanging from a very thin fishing wire, but that's just a coincidence, I'm pretty sure. I'm also pretty sure it's just a coincidence that the robot reminds me of both the Romulan cloaking device and Nomad. So what does the robot do? It tries to shoot them and I'm impressed by the practical explosions. The actors even seem to genuinely be afraid for their health. Thankfully for our heroes, the robot is stopped by a weird old man, who introduces himself as simply Flint. He first tries to force them to get out of his planet, because probably in the 23rd century you can own a planet, but when they remind him on the plague, uh, which was killing people in Europe, he starts looking very creepy and saying stuff which sounds almost like he was experienced it. And then he changes his mind. He suddenly starts to support them and calls them to his house. His house, which is represented by a reused painting of the Rigel 7 castle, you can really see that they ran out of money at this time of the production. The remastered version of the episode at least changes the Rigel 7 matte painting with a completely different building. I must admit that I don't really fully understand Flynn's plan, it looks like he changes his mind every few seconds. He says that he lives there alone and sends his skill bot named M4 to get them some Rigel in and leaves them alone to admire his collection. So what do our heroes do when every single minute is important and they try to save their crew? Well, they find time to have a drink. Spock seems surprised that he sees their previously unknown paintings by Leonardo da Vinci, or a previously unknown waltz by Johannes Brahms. Flint also has things like a Gutenberg Bible or some works of Reginald Pollock, but Kirk and McCoy ignore what he implies. I would like to assume that it's because they're afraid what will happen if they fail, but it looks more like they are interested in the booze. When M4 returns with the right Rytalin, Flint suddenly offers them that they don't have to leave yet, M4 can create the antidote in his lab. The sad thing is that nobody finds his behavior suspicious and they agree and Flynn soon introduces them to a beautiful young woman named Reina Kapek. Or should I call her Reina Chapek? You know, based on the Czech or in that time Czechoslovakian writer Karel Čepek, writer of such classics as R.U.R., inventor of the term robot. I am pretty sure that's also just a coincidence and there will be no robots mentioned here. She seems to be the perfect woman. She is beautiful, charming, funny and intelligent. She seems to be too perfect. Almost like she was created to fulfill some sort of male fantasy. But this is an episode written by a man, so I guess uh, this is just a case of a man who didn't know how to write realistic women and will not have any relevance to the real plot, right? Well. We have an attractive uh, female guest star, so I don't really have to explain what will Captain Kirk do in this episode, do I? While McCoy surprises M4, Kirk and Reyna play and dance together, while Spock plays the piano, but their fun gets interrupted by McCoy. The right line is not pure and therefore it's worthless. 
Larry Flint offers to go pick up some uh, more together with M4, so he can check on him, letting them alone. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Spock tries to tell Kirk that the song he played was an unknown piece by Johannes Brahms, and the notes appear to be his handwriting, but Kirk doesn't listen to him. I wonder if he's distracted by the ticking clock element, or by Reyna, or both. He gets to the lab, where he gets the chance to make out with Reyna, but M4 surprises them and it's in its killing mood again. Thankfully Spock is there with his phaser, he shoots M4 and saves their lives. And watching this scene made me realize the biggest problem this episode has. The writing and the structure. Kirk makes the decision to leave Spock instead of listening to his very important information, because the script tells so. Reyna decides to go to the same lab as Kirk because the script says so. Kirk and Reyna start making out because the script says so. M4 arrives because the script says so. Spock arrives because the script says so. Nothing from this scene feels natural. No character makes their decisions based on any logical motivation, if you understand what I'm trying to say. And this is the whole episode. This is not really a story. This is just a collection of things which happen. I don't feel like I'm watching a story about three heroes trying to save the lives of their crew. I feel like I'm watching somebody's grocery list. Oh, and of course, Larry Flint arrives too, and of course he has another M4, because why not? Then Flint and Reyna watch Kirk and Spock on their fancy flat screen HD CCTV, which I'm pretty sure was a sci fi concept in 1969, but it's not all that impressive in 2019. Then Reyna goes to Kirk to kiss him, while Flint watches them. And I don't know what he feels. Is he jealous? Does this turn him on? I mean, he's almost offering Reyna to Kirk during the whole episode. But then it looks like he suddenly changes his mind and forces our heroes to go to the forbidden room to find the right Lin. Spock wants to go there alone because he is the only smart man in this whole episode, but Kirk refuses. They all find the right Lin, but they also find something else. And when I have seen this episode for the first time, I honestly thought for a moment that they found a room filled with bodies of dead women. But no, they are actually androids, earlier versions of Reina. Flint wanted a perfect woman, so he created one. And then he created new and new upgrades. Oh yeah, and he's uh, thousands years old. He has been every important historical figure, including Brahms or Da Vinci, and even a couple of biblical figures. He always lives a part of a life and then disappears somewhere else, after which he again changes his identity and lives again a brand new life. So, is he an alien? Is he a mutant? Is he half alien? Is he a half robot? No, he's a normal, regular human who is thousands of years old. Makes perfect sense to me. Who wrote this? Alex Kurtzman? So now Flynn decides that Kirk and company are going nowhere, because they found out the truth, which they found out because he led them to that room. So why did he help them to get the cure? Was he lying when he said to Reyna that he will let them go? If so, what else did he lie to her? So now he pulls an extremely cheap looking 60s toy out of his pocket, and suddenly the smaller of the two shooting models appears on the table. I mean, suddenly the Enterprise gets shrunk and moved to the table. How did he do it? Does he really have a tool with a button which after pressing start some tool which rings down the ship on the orbit and beams the ship down? If so, how often does he use it? Where are all the other ships if he used it before? Why didn't it fail if this is the first time he used it? Don't get me wrong, I love seeing the actual shooting model, it's beautiful. I'm just trying to understand what exactly is going on. 
Kirk looks inside and sees that his crew is actually in stasis, meaning that they don't move. But the computer controls blink in normal speed. Which means that instead of taking simply a freeze frame, all of the actors actually stopped moving for a few seconds. Why do you shoot it like that? And what sense does it make in the story? So does Flint have also a machine which can freeze time? If so, why does it freeze time only for the humans but not for the computer? Why do I have a feeling that I am thinking much more about this episode than the writers and producers did? Now, Reyna comes and talks Flint into returning the Enterprise back, which makes the previous scene completely pointless. So now Flint does something stupid again. He thought that he will keep Kirk there to kickstart the Reyna bot's emotions, but he thought that he can then force her to love himself and not Kirk. How? The man has lived uh, for thousands of years. He should be the expert on women. How can he think something like this could work? So he then starts fighting Kirk in an embarrassing scene. Reyna says that she doesn't want to be the cause of this and lies down on the floor. And I'm confused because she's dead, I guess or not working, or broken, or whatever term should I use for a robot. So they leave, without Flint of course, and the final scene is the dumbest scene in the history of the original series. Kirk sits on his ass lamenting, and then falls asleep during a conversation with Spock. Did they cut out a scene where he took some sleeping pills, or some other drugs? because falling asleep during a conversation is not a normal thing that healthy human beings do. Then suddenly McCoy comes in and he thinks that it's normal. Then he starts to insult Spock for no reason, telling him how much he pities him, and after that Spock goes to Kirk and wipes his memory. What the fuck? No, seriously, what the fuck? This episode is stupid. The more you think about it, the less sense it makes. But it's not horrible, it's actually pretty enjoyable. I like many of the ideas in this episode, for example the idea of a practically immortal man living as many of the world's uh, most famous men. I think that one is absolutely fascinating, but they don't do anything with it. The episode is also not really boring, I don't find myself watching at my watch or playing with my phone or anything else. I think this is a standard season 3 episode. Which means, on my scale, from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece, and 5 is just average, I will give this episode 5 out of 10. As I said, it's an average season 3 episode. But as always, these were just my opinions. Feel free to let me know what do you think about this episode. Did you like it, hate it, or do you agree that it's just average? Let me know down in the comment section and see you in a couple of days, hopefully with a working voice, with my video about one of the best episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation called The Measure of a Man. Thank you very much for watching and see you in a couple of days. Bye.